Hello and welcome to today's coffee lecture about the virtual laboratory lobster and how you can use it for teaching. Today's speaker is Malte Stabs. He's um, part of the sales executive team at Labsters. Welcome, Malte. I'll hand over to you. Yeah, thank you and uh, welcome to everyone. I will share my screen directly. So in general, what we do is like virtual laboratory. That means like um, everything what you will see is accessible over the laptop, tablet or smartphone. And the topics we are covering is biology, chemistry, physics, medicine. The main focus we are driving in is the bachelor level. Um, a little bit to Labster itself uh, was created 10 years ago here at the Technical University in Copenhagen. Uh, we are around like 200 people, quite passionate about science. Uh, many of us were former teachers, myself included in high school then, uh, but we have also former uh, professors and so on. So they bring like then the theory curriculum on the, uh, on the table. And then on the other hand, we have like uh, the developers, because what you will see is also it's very uh, gaming, uh, gamification also in this virtual labs. Company overview. Uh, we have also a second product, which is like then completely VR, that is OBSIM nursing. I leave this on the side and uh, we'll focus very much on Labster and that is then all over the laptop. The decision why Labster is on the laptop and not on VR is because we designed this product not to replace your real laboratory. That means like how we envision is the product is used as a post lab exercise or pre lab exercise. Because what we think is like, you have like this very uh, nice equipped laboratories on campus. That means like the students go there, they have hands-on experiment. They have like the experiences with the teacher and their, the other students. But when they're at home, they cannot access the lab anymore. And that is exactly where Labster steps in. And because of the accessibility aspect, Therefore, we decided that it's then only accessible over the smartphone because everybody has a smartphone, laptop or tablet. That's a little bit the, the product decision behind it also in our, our vision, how you use then Labster. So let's say your students went a uh, bachelor course, hundreds of students, they see the lab maybe twice in the week and they're now at home and say, okay, yeah, that was very nice, but I really would like to do this PCR test, for example. So they would just go to smartphone, open the app and start the simulation. It's very important that it's, it is not a video, it is a simulation. The difference is in the simulation, if you do something, something else happens. It means like it's interactive, immersive and interactive. So the students, they go then in the lab and they have to go through lab safety already. So you have to take like the manual steps, lab code on, for example, go through the safety requirements and so on. The decision why this is always part of is because, of course, we want that the students are better prepared when they come to the real laboratory. But beside this, um, you build then the experiments. And the content decision behind this, it's very driven of on an adaptive learning approach. Let's say, I mean, I know in Switzerland you have 26 canton, so a lot of different uh, uh, educational backgrounds from the students. And when they come internationally, of course, there's a lot of of different backgrounds from the students. And now that I come to the simulation, maybe you have a student who is already a little bit advanced in the topic, then the simulation becomes a little bit more building on this. If you have a student who are lacking a little bit behind, then the simulation stays on the basic. And how do we accomplish this? We integrate AI. AI is part of the simulation and it's part of, it's a little ball which is flying around. You saw it there in the top so this is a little bit taking the position as the teacher. Again, we don't replace the teacher on campus, but when the students, of course, are at home, then uh, this AI guiding them through. So let us say they don't know what to do next. They can ask uh, the Dr. One, how we call it, and then they give some tips. Um, a long way, the simulation also quiz questions really to see how um, the students are understanding the topics. Because for us, it's very important is that um, if you have, for example, learning management system, um, or you can also use our administration system, you just give it to your students, each and single one plays alone, and therefore you know also how the level is of each of your students. And with that also very clearly set is like that data protection is an immense topic for us. So data is protected in Germany, but 
a little bit to break. Uh, so Denmark has around like 5 million people. More people are using Labster than dates. So we have 6 million students who are using Labster around the world. Biggest market, it's not a surprise, is uh, the US uh, because of the system there, but um, we are in uh, Asia and Pacific. We are in every country in Europe um, and Switzerland, of course, as well. And then also what really gives you the advantage of the scale and speed, um, because you can give the simulations, we have over 300 of them, within seconds to your students. Um, and then exactly the student success is measured in the system. And then to stress again, we produce all the simulations in-house. The students, how do they learn? Uh, they are around like 20. Of course, they grew up with uh, a phone. They learn over an app, and that is exactly where we tie into. Um, and that is also what they expect from the universities of innovation. Um, when you have it integrated into the bachelor course, because of the reasons I said, limited lab access, uh, this is just a starting point, the topics are difficult to understand, you have a lot of students go on, so they are very focused on the bachelor course. When this is integrated, and here um, I make a pause, because when you see like this results of 82% uh, of students feel more engaged and 94% um, of students feel more relevant knowledge of labs. Uh, this is, of course, fantastic news, but it is happening only if the teacher also wants to integrate it into your uh, curriculum. And there we help a lot. Because like, if you have the edtech tool, uh, tool on the side, like just free to use, the students won't do it. Uh, so you need to put it into your curriculum. They will really help really to, to sit together with the teacher because you have a lot of uh, stuff on the plate. So really integrate our, our catalog into the curriculum and then the students will love it and see the benefit. Um, I pause here because it's always good to have a little bit more questions and open up. Thank you, Malte. I'll just continue with another slide. Uh, the point is that we have licensed labs to here at the University of Bern. And that's also why we have this coffee lecture to make it known. Uh, you're very welcome to use the tool, try it out. It's open and free for you until March 1st next year. So this is kind of the second trial we have and we'll see uh, how it performs. If you want to be a course administrator and uh, get some support, you're welcome to send an email to Malte. And if you want to get some more information about how to use it in practice, you can uh, write to Sebastian Knüsel. He has some experience with Labster already, and he put that experience in a podcast that is online on Ilias, and you're also welcome to watch this podcast. So it also contains some general information about the product Labster and about the experiences that Sebastian made himself last year. And on the second part, he has some tips on how to implement Labster in his course on Ilias, actually. So that's what I wanted to add here. Yes. Thank you.